On this episode, we talk about landing pages, Nintendo, and shitty social media experts. Ooh. <laughs> This is Gary Vay Nurchuk, and this is episode 106 of the Ask Gary V Show. All right, guys, get back to work. Relax. <laughs> we didn't have to go so quiet. Jeez. All right, India, let's get into the show. Oh, they really got back into it. <laughs> that was, I'm shocked. David asks If you were going to be on TV and you could only promote one platform to be followed on, which one would it be? David, tremendous question. Uh, The answer would be I would reverse engineer the audience of the show. One of the biggest reasons I think that uh, I've had success as a communicator is I'm not religious about what I have to say at that moment. I'm religious about what does the audience on the other side need or want to hear if I was them, using the empathy radar. And so if I'm at USC, I'm gonna throw on a guru shirt as a ha 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 and really just jam on how do I bring them value. Like if if I really took entrepreneur class, like let me prove to you that you shouldn't be in that class, go and be an entrepreneur, right? If I'm on TV and I'm on CNN or Fox or CNBC, I need to hit the masses. That's gonna be a, you know, it's gonna be everybody but 35 to 75, so I would answer Facebook in that environment because it's gonna reach the most potential people. But if I'm on the youngest skewing show I can think of, I don't know, some sort of show that's targeting 15 to 20 year olds, though they're not watching TV anymore, but let's say, you know, if I was on a YouTube show uh, talking, then I would probably drive Snapchat as the one platform, probably Instagram actually, if I'm gonna fully, fully answer that, probably Instagram. And so, um, to me, it's, it's uh, I'm answering you, and one of the interesting things is, I've been, I really got into the community this weekend. The kids were playing around in the backyard, I had a lot of pockets uh, to like kind of check out my phone, I engaged a little bit, big shout out to a lot of you, a lot of you saw me jumping into your Facebook comments. Um, it was interesting to see how people are analyzing this show, and I wanna say, back to me listening, I wanna say, if you just watch the way I answered that question, I'm trying to bring as much value across the board to everybody. I answered the question, it's Facebook, it's Snapchat, but I also want people to understand it's reverse engineering the audience that's listening in every environment, in every interview with Inc. Magazine, in every TV show, in every, I'm in Ireland, you know, I'm in the middle of America, you know, if I'm in Alabama, I curse a little less because cursing's not as great in the Bible Belt, you know, like, you know, and so, but if I'm in Brooklyn, you know, to 16 year olds, I'm gonna bring it. Um, And so, uh, you know, that's that. Chris asks, do you think that the Nintendo NX running on Android would be a bit bizarre? Feels like Nintendo might not want to invest so heavily in home consoles anymore. Thanks, Mike. Chris, uh, great question. Sorry to randomly jump into your uh, question and answer it, but that's what we do on the Ask Gary V Show. Uh, you know, I don't think, you know, first of all, Nintendo should be concerned or and should not bet on just being a home console because there's no such thing anymore. That's like uh, being a TV provider and only caring about the TV set in a world where this is the number one device in our society. And so I would argue it's about time, Nintendo. Where have you been for the last 48? months Mario because you've been wasting your time away as other people have been jumping and there should be no Angry Birds. That should have been Princess from Zelda but no, Nintendo was slow and old and to Nintendo's credit, once a playing card company in the way back, uh uh-huh, a little history lesson for the kids, Nintendo needs to pivot again and start acting 2016, 17, and so if they're betting on being a home council or holding on, like, oh, there's still a place for home councils, they're completely out of their goddamn mind because everything's going on over the top of a television set, and so to me, it's not like weird. Shouldn't they be worried about that? It's weird, where the hell have you been? Paul asks, Do you recommend your website's landing page be a jab like a blog or a right hook? Paul, you're welcome for all I do. Uh, the answer to your question, the answer to your question is, you know, I think it depends on what your business is doing. And so, to me, if you're selling something, you need to have some level of right hook because you just have such infinite amounts of time when people land. Um, but if you're selling information, or you're looking to brand awareness, or you've been so selly as an organization for such a long time, you need a counter move to soften your right hooks. 
And that's it. And, and that's the theme of 106 episodes, which is that every answer is different. It's a reason I can give away my best advice here, have all my competitors at other agencies and other things come here. I mean, I had a bunch of competitors, literally, small major medias asking me for advice over the weekend in email, which I was answering because at the end of the day, I can give my best advice because it's all in theory, right? It's all in theory. I can give this kind of detail which is pretty significant, but then you still gotta get into one extra layer, the clients of Maynard, the things that I work on have to get to one extra layer of detail to be successful. And so to me, I'd have to audit what the business or organization was doing for the last 12, 24, 36 months, if it existed, and then I'd need to understand what it needs to achieve. But once you understand what you're trying to achieve, all your behavior has to match that. And that's why a strategy, a religion, a belief system is so imperative in what you do. The amount of people that are watching this show right now that are wishy-washy on what they're trying to achieve, caring about dumb shit like, oh, I want a nice watch or a car, like, you're gonna lose. If you understand how to level that up, I can get any watch and any car I want because I leveled up and I still don't want that bullshit. And so I'm not judging you, you do you, you do what you want, but I promise you, push yourself to understanding what you're doing at one, two, three levels higher and you'll amass that success along the way that are beneath you. If you want that thing right in front of you, if you go above it, that thing is a byproduct of you shooting for a higher uh, plane. Um, So I think it comes down to the details. Matthew asks, why is it that people who specialize in social media never have a clear-cut social media brand except tweeting links? Matthew, Matthew, Matthew Roth, thank you so much for asking this question to the world that I just jumped into and uh, and rode into the show. Uh, I agree 1,000%, I'm flabbergasted. As somebody who wrote a book called The Thank You Economy that talked about engagement and all the social media, this was 2011 where I was definitely supply and demand wise at the top of a pyramid of social media experts, I like to think I still am, but I like separating myself by actually putting in the work. It was stunning to me how many people were like, Gary Vee, that was the best book, you're so right, you're so right. And I just and look, they haven't replied to anybody. Like all they do is go around and just share links trying to build up, they're literally playing, you wanna talk about not understanding the game that matters? Literally their behavior was caring about how many followers they had. You wanna talk about an action I will never care about? It's how many top line potential awareness I have with. I care about the depth. I care about the 24 people that jumped on this last week and watched 40 episodes and really care and really intrigued and see some value. That's what I care about, it's about depth. 24, 24 people. That's how much I get excited about it in a world where people want to, I'm going to get to 10,000, I'm going to get to 100,000. A lot of social media professionals share a crap load of content because it gets retweeted and that's how they get followers, not recognizing what is that behavior towards. I mean, just to remind the market, I was, you know, what I did by speaking about the future, social media, da da da, was it allowed me to build a business, allowed me to build a foundation off that thought leadership. And it was a clear club plan, right? It wasn't like super like, oh, Oh, like how do we get here? Oh, weird. How do we? How do we get here? No, it wasn't any of that. It was understanding that my behavior had a map what I wanted to happen. And by the way, even this in itself, in five years, when you watch something that I put out, will make sense. That this wasn't even the end goal. The end goal is not to build a hundred million dollar a year agency. Um, and so. Uh, I think the reason they suck is because they suck. I think the reason that a lot of social media professionals suck is because I think a lot of real estate agents and a lot of SEO experts and a lot of like whatever's hot, let me jump on it, people jumped on social media because nobody knew what the hell it was and there's a lot of players who jump ahead of things that nobody understands and tries to collect fast nickels and pennies during that indecisive gray period uh, instead of looking for the long dollars or the long Benjamins as P. Diddy and B.I.G. May he rest in peace, Stefan, used to say. And Lil' Kim, I like the way she used to say it. You're a big Lil' Kim fan, India. Sure, yeah. Like, tell me what you feel when you hear the word Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim? I don't know. I'm like Queen B? Like that, yeah, that's... yeah, like Queen, the Yas Queen, yeah. Yeah, Yas okay, good, good. <laughs> 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 Um, I'm more Lisa Left Eye girl. Oh, Left Eye. Yeah. 
um, Doc has been on the show, but this went. Doc Sheldon. I was giving my left. That was my little. Oh, oh, that was my. That was a little left eye. Doc Sheldon. I love Doc. He's been pounding me, Doc. I apologize. I know I have to answer something for you. I'm like insane in the membrane on my email. Like worst all time. Like I'm so humbled by the. Att- <laughs> you getting 500 emails a second hurts your left eye. <laughs> Doc Sheldon asks, if you could instantly trade one of your weaknesses for one of your strengths, which two would you trade? <laughs> this is one of the great <laughs> questions ever. This is really good. I don't wanna like, I don't wanna, I'm scared to screw this up, which is probably why I'm giving it some thought. So uh, D-Rock, Stefan, find some uh, Jeopardy-like music that doesn't get me sued as I ponder this and talk this out. Um, a strength into a weakness. What am I really strong at that I don't think is so needed? God, I, I love myself so much that I don't <laughs> want to change anything. This is why I'm struggling with this. This talks about the level of happiness I have. What's a weakness that I care? God, I really... So first and foremost, the answer to the question is there's no absolute here. This is more like 80-20 where maybe I would switch it from an 80-20 to a 20-80. That's one of the first reactions I have. There's nothing I'd be, there's no strength I want to give up um, so fast. Um, You know, at some level, um, (laughs) yeah, like, you know, I'm a little combative in meetings at times with clients where I, like, I love competition so much. I would say being competitive is probably as big of a deal as it is, but I would say that my competition, competitive gene, goes five to seven percent too far. I would give a five to seven percent of it because it's insane. Like, you know, like, you guys, I mean, you guys know how I play basketball. Like, like I really am mad. Like, I want to hurt people. Like, I, I want to hurt people's feelings in meetings. Um, like I literally, like in meetings, will turn red. My eyes will turn red when somebody says something that I think is really disrespectful to my company, and literally try to historically clown them in the meeting so that forever their their exact their contemporaries at that table. I literally want to say things that the other people at the table on their side tell to their grandchildren. Like, oh, I was once in this meeting with this Gary Vaynerchuk guy, and he said to Rick, who was a douchebag boss, he said, "Fuck you." Like, you know, like like I'm very into that. I I want to like like end the debate in the room at that time, whereas I could have done it afterwards, I could have done it a little more politically correct, but if I get to that rogue tilt place emotionally, in a business meeting, even maybe the first time we ever meet, I let my competitive juices, I can feel it, it's like that incredible Hulk type stuff, like I can feel like, oh crap, I'm about to destroy this person's soul. So that's one thing that I would give back five to seven percent. On a, on a weakness that I'd like to have a, a more of a strength on, um, I'd like to remember people's names better. That, actually, that's very easy. I spend an enormous amount of time in our HR software trying to make sure I know everybody's names. I, I, you know, and, and then the answer really is I have to listen a little bit better in the initial meeting. Like, I'm like, hey, I'm Gary. You need to say, hi, I'm India. Yeah, hey. But like, when she says, hey, she's India, like, I'm not listening. I'm already like on to like, oh, Steph- uh, hey, I'm Gary. I'm Stefan. Right, I didn't listen, right? And so like not listening when people say hello is a weakness because if I actually listen, I'll have a 50% chance of remembering their name. It's crazy. I will remember everything. I'm very visual. Like I can never get lost. I'm killer on directions. I will bring up stuff that happened between us like 15 years from now. You're like, what? Like if I see it, it's on, but um, and if I hear it, it's on, but I need to listen in the first place to remember your name. So remembering names is something I'm passionately uh, upset with myself about. Like Doc, you could see, I knew Sheldon, like I knew right away, I knew what his, like I know, it, visually I know his like, his profile, side face, like hair, like glasses, like I know exactly who he is, um, but I sometimes, I, names I struggle with. It's everything, cool. Uh, question of the day, what is your favorite all-time Nintendo game? Favorite all-time Nintendo game. Andrew, favorite all-time Nintendo game? Give it to him. Uh, <laughs> show me, show me. Hang time, hang time. Just the worst on camera. Just, dude, you're just the worst. He's just the worst. You're just the worst. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.